Yo, what's the deal, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Guthy. On this episode of the segment that we like to call Black and Brown Time here at the Gusto Industries, I went to go meet up with the homie K Deuce at the mosque, yo. And um, yeah, after we sat for prayer and all that, we got to it, man, and uh, he told me a story. I'm gonna spare you the long introduction. Just run the footage, yo. Here we go. My name is Mario. Uh, people know me as Kados. You know, I'm from Watts, California. I grew up on um, Bell Haven in 114. I'm Muslim. I'm a Shia Muslim. I come from around this area. Uh, you know, I do music. You can click on uh, Instagram and find me on Kados Music. Facebook, I'm uh, Kados Paws. Snapchat, it's Kados Music. I'm on all music streams. Album is Religious Killers. Uh, you can catch it on any music stream, Spotify, SoundCloud, any anything. But once again. The album is Religious Killers, and I'm K Deuce. That's K D U S E. You know, I'm from Watts. I was born at, uh, right here at Martin Luther King. They call it Killer King. Uh, when I was coming up, it was called Killer King because you could say it's in the middle of Compton and Watts, Linwood. So uh, back in the days, I was born in '86. So uh, in '86 was a cocaine epidemic. Uh, it was everybody's mom was on drugs or everybody's parents were selling drugs. Actually, when I was born to Martin Luther King, I was one of the first mixed kids at that time that not have drugs in my system. Most mixed kids was tricked babies. Everybody was having trick babies that was mixed. And um, I was actually just a normal kid that was mixed. It's just crazy around here. But, you know, I grew up around here in Watts, California. I lived in Compton. I lived in Lakewood, uh, Downey. I did a big part of my life in Lancaster, the 661, uh, Lancaster, Palmdale area. Um, I went to school uh, right here at Maxine Waters. I uh, went to elementary at Henry Longfellow in Compton. After that, I was transferred to uh, Lancaster. You know, mom said came across some money. You know how she do. She got up out the hood. Uh, I went to uh, <clears throat> Jack Northrop Elementary. Uh, now there's uh, New Vista Elementary. I mean, what well, was New Vista Elementary then, now there's Jack Northrop Elementary. Uh, Middle school time I did in Paiute, that's in Lancaster, Paiute Middle School. Uh, my high school time I did uh, Antelope Valley High School for the ninth grade. I got kicked out, the game banging. I was coming up raw, you know. Uh, came back out here to Maxine Waters and I actually graduated high school from Maxine Waters up in Watts. Me and a lot of my homies, uh, I was going there where J-Rock was going. Uh, a lot of us went there. But yeah, like, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a Cali kid. Been through all this, all this type of little area from all the way, I'm going to say, from um, the low, the farthest I ever lived probably was Lakewood, from Lakewood to Lancaster. Been through all of it. What did you do for fun as a kid, bro? Uh, for fun, growing up and watch, uh, we fought. We, we game banged uh, a lot. We game banged. You know, uh, I'm originally a Bellhaven, Bonnie on her blood. You know, I grew up there my whole life. Uh, my mom was one of the original members. Everybody from our family is one, so, you know, uh, the gang was more like a tradition, and I was a young dude. Uh, everybody I knew was a warrior. The tradition from the tribe was Bellhaven. We was warriors, and um, you grew up in ranks to become a warrior for the street, and um, that's what I did. I uh, I loved it. I loved it. I loved everything about it. I loved the uh, the, the gang life. The uh, it was more of a uh, it's a family. Like I said, it's a tribe. Which it's a tradition. It was, uh, I remember seeing uh, the big warriors growing up, uh, the big homies, and how they held it down when people came through, and, uh, how they took care of the, uh, the neighborhood, and, and you know, uh, the Spanish people lived there, they still live there. We, uh, we never had a Mexican problem with them. We actually won the games where a lot of Hispanic people is from the game. So we have a big Hispanic part of, uh, of our games due to the Bell Havens, the Ten Eights, the Blocks, and the Nickerson Gardens, which is the most famous is the Nickerson Gardens. But yeah, coming up as a little, uh, little mixed breed, man, there was something else around here. Like, uh, you know, um, the Mexicans, I wasn't Mexican enough, and um, I wasn't black enough for the blacks. So, you know, uh, I always was in the middle until I found myself, and I made them learn how to be like me. Uh, my hair is a tradition I've been wearing forever. Uh, 
A lot of people know me around here as the Dita Don. I wear Adidas, everything, you know, I can even tell about Adidas watch. But uh, uh, yeah, I do, um, I fell in love with the Adidas due to Run DMC and the music of the, um, my favorite artists was people from um, California, I mean, from New York. I, I love the New York music, the the lyrics, the, uh, how they challenge you to, 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 to have knowledge. Just when going on there talking about some shooting, you had to know really what you was talking about. Um, my favorite, uh, my favorite, well, I'm gonna say my, um, the guy that I follow after would be Jay Z. Uh, I loved everything about him, uh, his whole Rockefeller thing, the way he, uh, came in the game. He dropped his own money, he had his own name. He didn't take any favors, you know, I thought that was real gorilla like. And, uh, but my favorite artist of all times who I, who I took my style from and I wanted to be like was Cameron. Uh, I love Cameron. Um, uh, I love Jim Jones. I love Joel Santana. Uh, that's where the hair come from, Jim Jones. My whole attitude come from the camera, to learn to love yourself. And my cockiness came from Santana, being the young, but not the group. And uh, like Freaky Ziki, you know, he was he was big buff dude. He ran around, he had fun, but he he'd get the job done. Hell rail, just the whole Dipset camp. I just man, uh, uh, Jr. Ryder, uh, it just never stopped. All of them just, uh, but Cameron was just. Just love. I fell in love with Cameron a long time ago, and uh, actually, my name is K. Deuce. It stands for Killer Chaos, and I got the killer from Cam, Killer Cam, and uh, I got the chaos from uh, my cousin in prison. He has sent some out down here, and um, actually, two of my big homies. One name is Killer, and one name is Chaos, and I like both of them too. So uh, I'm not a little homie. I'm just Killer Chaos. So K Deuce is not for uh I don't follow behind nobody or I'm not the second or nothing. I'm I'm me. I just uh I was a math kid so I squared the K's and I came up with K Deuce. Um and so but uh back to the music by Cam, uh, you know uh He still got it bro. I just heard a, a freestyle by I just him. shared it. I just <laughs> shared it. Yeah. He just it it never stopped like uh yeah. His uh his uh, his money the way he fluctuates his money still keep yourself in shape uh always had one of the prettiest women he always spoke his mind um even when his bosses went against me went against the bosses because he is a boss so only bosses can go against bosses that's what I learned in that situation because no matter what nobody say you know I love Jay Z like you know like that's that's the goal Cameron is is is, is the beginning but be, Hove is the goal. But uh, yeah, though. But like, um, even like me, like you know, if my big homies, I love them to death. But if they would have um, ever tested me, you know, I would have put the cam, the fuck Jay Z cam, right out. Like you feel me? I would have came for them. Like that was, um, that's what I did. Um, my group, um, um, uh, I, I formed uh, SMB, the Success My Boys. Um, that's another family tradition. I didn't make that up. It's just um, it comes from my uncles. They're resting in peace right now. Willie Livingston, uh, Bo. Uh, Scarface, my boy Danny Ray, you know what I mean? Those are my big homies. They had started this S and B around here from the street success of the projects. So uh, I'm a success mob boy. You know what I mean? So uh, me and my crew, the mob boys, you know, uh, shout out to B Rock, shout out to Rock Lucci, um, shout out to my boy uh Bam Deuce, and my little sister T D Z, uh L Bug, you know, um, I had, you know, I, those was my dip sets, you know, I, uh, I did what I had to do, you know what I mean, um, you know, become the leader, you have to take good and bad, so, you know, for everything we did good, you know, thank you, and for all the times that we crumbled and we did bad, thank you again, you know what I mean, I was learning, um, uh, the process, when I grew up in rap, like, uh, the battle raps, you know, um, I'm Killer K, I was a battle rap specialist, but it wasn't. The, the the disrespect battle raps because you know I grew up as a gangster so calling me out my name and um, disrespecting my homeland where I came from and all that that could get somebody killed so you know uh, it was more of versus 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 like you know uh, yeah. a skill versus skill you know like if I pull up and a dude had a cocaine rap you know I, I match my cocaine rap if the dude talk about pistols I match my pistol rap if uh, so forth and so forth you know what I'm saying so um, you know I battled everybody around here uh, you know from my whole area from around the area uh, graduated from Maxine Waters like I said so that was like a a gateway school where a lot of people came to a lot of people we test our skills there a lot and um 
you know, that was my specialty. Like, I love it that, like, um, I had felt, like, uh, if you ever watched that movie when you was young, Fresh, mm. and he used to play chess, and his dad was like, uh, he's not the greatest chess player, but if you put the clock on him, he'll, he'll run through him. Mm. Well, you put the pressure and you put the subject right out the front, I don't feel nobody can beat me, you know what I mean? Um, I'm too... I'm ahead of the, you know, I'm just ahead of the, I'm the head of the parade, you know, I get up early, uh, you know, uh, I, and I, I went there, you know, I'm one of the kids that, uh, I just talked about, uh, I talked about the murders, I didn't glorify the drug dealers, I didn't glorify the murderers, I didn't glorify the street gangs because we was forced into them things. I was forced to be a drug dealer. I was forced to uh, be a, uh, a warrior for my tribe. I was forced to be a, uh, to be the things that I was. So you know, I didn't glorify them things. The things I glorified was the things that that I chose myself as my like. You know, you might uh, if you drive my album right now, like my album is called Religious Killers. I picked my religion. I stood for my religion. I believed in my religion. So therefore, um, my family. I, I died for my family. I pull up the family. Um, the fallen soldiers. Um, Things that have meaning to it, you know, them the things that I rapped about, those are things that I glorify, those are, those, those are where my skills has been held at, you know, uh, like Jigga said, you know, uh, you know, been in the project hallways and rapping about being in the projects all day, that's, you know, that's, that's nothing to me, you know what I'm saying, I'm like, uh, I'm the type that's trying to go get the money and come back, you know, um, I have a new hero, like he's a, like a hero, like to me, you know, uh, Top Dog. Shout out to Top Dog, you know, uh, he brought snow to the hood, and you know, uh, that's something that you just say when you a kid, and you just that's something that you say funny that I'm gonna bring snow to the hood one day, and uh, he did it, and you know, I, I think that that's like a motivation one on one, uh, like every day I wake up, like it's possible, like you know what I mean. Uh, I know top, I don't know top like that. You could tell by our age and our different streets, but uh, from the stories I heard of top, from a lot of people that I know that's close to top dog, like uh, he grew up a sad, you know, he grew up, and when I say savage, I mean like, you know, we grew up the hard way and nobody gave us nothing, everything that we had to take and make our own name, like, you know, and uh, basically what I'm saying, that's motivation to me, not to speak up on nobody else, because I really like speaking up on other people, but uh, I'm saying it in a good way this time. And I'm just saying, like, you know, that was just some, um, gave me a reason to wake up, to stop just putting my life on the line, just uh, a reason to be a better everything, father, uh, 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 in a relationship type, any type of way, man, that just was some good motivation. What's your favorite track on Religious Killers? On Religious Killers, my favorite track is, actually, it's a song that uh, Lucho, and my boy, uh, and my boy Pudjo did the barber. Um, Call himself uh, GFG, GF. I forgot. I can't tell his rap name, but you know him as Pudjo the barber. Uh, that the song that they did with the uh, with the little homie, um, the homie Hardbody, and um, they was going through their catalog and they had me hear it. Uh, uh, it's called Drug Dealer. Um, you know what I mean? Um, I believe it's number ten. It's called Neighborhood Drug Dealer, and uh, and on there we kind of like battled about our streets. We're from the same hood, but we kind of showed how our streets had made us different. And uh, they was young, they young, and I think that they made uh, I think that was a powerful song. And so they, they you know, powerful. yeah, they That's featured me. <laughs> I appreciate it. Don't get in the recognition like that real stuff, like mm -hmm. what you be talking about. Like I feel it's so underrated or unappreciated, you know. Well, you know, uh, about that, like, you know, a lot of people tell me that I'm underrated or I'm um, on a slept on and all that. Mm -hmm. Fear. And uh, fear is, um, you know, every emotion is good and bad. You know, you can't be too scary, but sometimes fear help you. You can't be too cocky, but sometimes cockiness help you. You can't be too much of anything. So uh, a lot of people uh, hear that emotion, fear, and then they'll put it with something negative. You know, uh, they... Uh, it make me feel better that I know that um, I came from, you know, uh, my mom is a queen now and she's one of the best people in the world, but her struggle that she went through with her drug abuse, uh, my father being a bandit, um, me kind of raising myself with my sisters, like to know that, 
You know, I taught myself how to read at 18 years old. You know, I, when I was uh, at Maxine Waters, they graduated me on the third grade level when I was 18 years old. And um, I went to the county jail and I wanted to write my mom and ask her to send me some money to get some hygiene. And the letter that she wrote back, she was just so, dis so disappointed and um, that I couldn't read and spell. And I just couldn't come home like that. So uh, the fact that people fear my lyrics now, knowing that I can't even spell them before, or uh, the fact that people fear my stories, knowing that my comprehension level wasn't up there to par, is like, you know, that's, that's the biggest compliment that I can ever have. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, there's not nobody that they never heard of it or never listened, but they might not say nothing about it. So every day I get up and... Uh, I wish I would have bought my black book. You know about the book, the folder. <laughs> it's legendary around I really here. Appreciating your music because I feel like after I hear it, like I know, bro, like Training Wheels, for example, that's one of my favorite tracks on there. It's like, damn, you really like telling your story. On I feel like you get to know you through your yeah. music. And that's not, I don't, you don't see that enough. You know, it's mostly just materialistic rap and just, just I don't know. Well, you know, the new kids today, they have an identity crisis. You know, everybody's having an identity crisis and they don't know themselves. You know, already within a few little interviews, I mean, time to interview, I done told you so many things about me, good and bad, and I own up to it. Well, it took a lot of years to learn myself and understand who I was, and no matter what's going on, that I'm still him. You know, uh, I done won about probably 150 fights, but I could say I lost two. And them two niggas know, I ain't gonna get you. But not, <laughs> more of I lost myself in the two fights. Not that the people were so much victorious than me or they were so much better than me, is that I was lacking something at the moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm saying all that to say that even through, like uh, what Jay-Z said, uh, uh, you know, uh, he said, even, uh, even in defeat, there's a valuable lesson learned, so it evens out for me, you know what I'm saying? So even in defeat, the worst thing you can do is let me get defeated and understand what I did wrong. Because now I'm coming back as a, man, it's, it's, it's unexplainable. Like, man, if I feel like I'm fighting you and I should have been ducking more and catching you on the left. And then I realize that and then I see you again, I'm going to bust you up. Like, you know what I mean? No losses, um, just lessons. Yeah, just a lesson. There's no losses. Only losses that I consider is is, is, is not trying. Not even just giving, just, up. just giving up, walking away and let somebody run through me. You know what I mean? And, um, and that's what's going on right now is that the children is in identity crisis. You know, they hear something working and they just running with it. They hear that they, they see something for somebody else and they just put themselves in it. They, they're, 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 it's just a, just a crisis that they don't know themselves. And it's due to a big lack of... Um, it's gonna sound right it's gonna sound ugly but it's the mother's fault due to the fact that you know um though my mom wasn't rich though my mom had a drug addiction though my mom didn't have no male role models for us look what my mom did like your your the kids new kids moms they don't even know what drug addiction is they don't even know about these things and their children is turning to homosexuals every day more and more women are raising daughters out of boys every day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was, um, even, and, um, you know, people talk about all this homosexuality, things like that. Now, that's not right. It's not right due to the fact that as black men, we already going through so much, man. Like, come on, man. You want to put on a dress now? You want to degrade us as uh, the Hispanic people? We already going through so much, brothers. Like, I, that's what, like, that's, it just blows my mind how, you can know that they're trying to demasculate us and, and, and you just voluntarily help them. Like, you know, like, this is crazy to me. Like, you know, like, you know that you just, you want to be with a, another man. Um, the, the numbers, the way that it's coming in the numbers. You know, when I was young, it was, uh, I knew, like, I'm going to say 400 grown-ups and only one was homosexual or two. But now, out of 400 homosexuals, it's probably only two of them that's straight. It's something wrong with the reality, man, and that's what I'm saying. It's not I'm not I'm not attacking homosexuality or what people prefer because I'm not perfect. But what I'm attacking is how you just coming out and like it's just something to do. You're not gay. You're not gay. Nobody's not. They, they, it's not that many homosexuals. It's more bisexuals going on to homosexuality. So it's not real. It's just a fashion. It's a fad, and 
And a lot of people don't understand, like when I was a young kid and you wore a Payless, that could ruin your career forever. This fashion that y'all trying to wear, it could ruin you forever. And that's what you got to understand, that this is not a fashion or a fad. This is permanent record. This is going on your permanent record. Like, you guys got to understand that thing. So if you're not them things, please stop putting things on your record for no reason. That's what I'm trying to come at it like. You know what I mean? Because I'm an entertainer. So we all know about the homosexual numbers in entertainment. It's at a, it's, 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 I can't be a homophobic if I was an entertainer. It's, it's impossible. Everybody's a homosexual in entertainment. So how can I be an entertainer if I'm homophobic? It wouldn't, it, that don't make sense. So we know I'm not that. But, you know, this is this my opinion. Like I said, you know, everybody got one. But uh, for for the black people and for the mothers who grew up that without no fathers, for the mothers that grew up um, who, trying to, who had to play the mother and the father role, for the mothers who grew up and, um, you know, they wake up every day and they try their best, you should, that should make you feel the same. And um, black men always been the bandit out of the children's life uh, due to the system, due to the drugs, due to the gangs, due to the way that the county building is set up, that the man can't come there or the woman get kicked out. The mans are being absent in the children's life since the beginning of time. So we already know about the man part, what they did wrong. That's why I said the mothers. The man being, the man being out of the lives. You know what I mean? I grew up, I, we on the whole block, we all shared one dad. And I believe it was my homie dad's, you know, uh, Smoke. He had a dad. Uh, my cousin had a father, uh, rest in peace, to my uncle, Lee, Willie Liverston, Lee Boy Liverston. Um, he played the bigger role as, as my father than anybody. And like I said, like uh, that was two fathers in the whole neighborhood. And we all shared them. So, you know... Um, that wasn't that wasn't normal like you know but uh nowadays you know uh all my all my friends are dads all, all of my all of my man listen you try not to be a daddy in this age but we come and get you like we not playing that like you know because we come up from that from that era so basically that's what i'm speaking about like uh my error, we have to stop this homosexuality. We have to stop this, this being a lesbian. We have to stop this, uh, uh, my brother gay and all this kind of stuff. They're not, they're not. And we have to stop that in order to move to the next level because we're gonna need, we're gonna need warrior women to birth our warrior soldiers. And we're not gonna be able to have that if everybody's being homosexual. You need that. I mean, we're going to need you guys to come together with the golly blessings that God gave you. And we're going to need you to birth warriors for this for this movement. And if he's gay and she's gay and both and you, you guys are tainting both of the bloodlines, you guys are tainting the warriors. So uh, it's the only way for uh, for us to be better. We have to stop everything. You know what I mean? You got to stop everything. And it's just not because of the homosexuality is the part problem. That's the problem that I'm talking about right now. You know, the gains in the homosexuality in the black and brown neighborhoods. That's what I'm talking about right now. But it's a million problems in the black and brown neighborhood. But the, uh, the gains and the homosexuality is something that we could control today. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. What's your thoughts on the uh, Black Lives Matter movement? Uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, as far as the movement, I mean, uh, as far as the movement, I want to say uh, you have to be blind not to love the movement. Okay. Like that movement is like, come on, man. Got black people, rich people, poor people. Yeah, everybody supporting the cause. I don't care what the cause was. It's just that all people are on, on one accord. That's great. As far as the uh, the ownership of the Black Lives Matter, me being a Shia Muslim, once again back to the homosexuality. I cannot let no homosexuality, no no homosexual person speak for me. I'm not a homosexual, and brother, you don't know what I'm going through. And if you're a white homosexual, you really don't know what I'm going through. I'm black. I'm, 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 I'm a man. I'm, you know, so I want the police to respect me like a man. I don't want you to come speaking for me in that kind of tone and saying things is okay. No, that's not okay. I'm, I'm a man. I have, I have daughters and I have a son. I'm, 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 a, I'm setting out an example for my family. When, 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 when my woman go to the store and I'm not there, I need y'all to know not to bother her. 
where my children are somewhere. I'm, I'm putting down statements now. So even when I'm gone, you're not going to bother my children. You're not going to touch my family because I'm a man. So therefore, a homosexual person could not speak for me. Man, woman, black, orange, green, burgundy, whatever it is. You can't speak for me because I'm a man. And on top of that, I'm a Shia Muslim. You would never, I would never, never follow behind someone that's like that. You know what I mean? In every religion, they said that homosexuality is an, is an immoral act. Especially as men of Shia. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow, I'm going to follow the rules. So whoever who says that they're religious, they're Christians, they're this or that, open your book. Open your guide to your life. And it says it right there. Homosexuality is not right. So why can you follow behind a homosexual leader? That's not you. That's a question that the people tune in, said a comment. You tell me how you can do that. Don't say I'm being racist because I'm following my religion. You tell me what are you doing for not following your religion and your beliefs that 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 you set for. See, because I don't go around making people Christians, Muslims, or atheists or whatever they is. I didn't I didn't do that. That's a free will. But as you pick that free will and you picked up that Bible, you didn't see where it says that about homosexuality? When you picked up that, that, that the Quran, Quran, you didn't see what it said about homosexuality? When you picked up that Mormon book, you didn't see what it said about homosexuality? So don't, don't, attack, don't attack the messenger. You read for yourself because that's the greatest thing about life is having self-understanding. So you tell me not... As the people, you people tell me, how do you feel about homosexuals leading the movement that's worldwide? It, it, it's not about the movement. It is all about the homosexuals. It's not about the movement because head is about being about the movement. Black Lives Matters are endorsing millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. So who life does it matter to? I'm black. My son is black. He's a black man. My nephew is a black man. We haven't received nothing. My grandfather died a black man. My father is, is an immigrant. We haven't received no Black Lives Matter type things. So, once again, when I ask somebody, stop, stop, listen. The ice cream truck is pretty and it has pictures and they give ice cream. But if you run in the streets, you can get, you could die by an ice cream truck. Don't let pretty pictures fool you about the truth. You know what I'm trying to say? If you, if anybody understand what I'm trying to say about that thing, people are getting so confused and they and, and they're riding on. Ooh, the Black Lives Matter. Where at? I just seen. I just was watching Pride TV news the other day, and I seen Africans dying by the hundreds of thousands. I seen people up in Haiti still don't. They still. They're still enslaved. So where does the Black Lives Matter at? The Jamaican people is not even Jamaican, ain't they? The Belizean people ain't they Europe, ain't they Br Belize? They're from they're from British. They're British Belize. Where is the Black Li Where? If you tell me where, I can I can ride with it. But where does it matter at? The slogan. Well, Adidas matter. Nikes matter. The marathon should continue matters. If we're just going by the brand and the slogan, all of them matters then. Because what are you doing? What is it a slogan or is it a way of life? So